Hello, my name is Jalen Avila, and in this five minute solo video, we are going to start a new series where we just talk about how to operate machine basics. We're going to start off by using a quite commonly seen machine, the Sonosite Export. Now, this right here, this is touchscreen, this is not. I personally often get quite confused by that at times. Now let's talk about what to do with this screen down here, how to enter patient data on the screen, and then how to select the appropriate transducers. You might get this bottom screen in two different kind of orientations. This is the ready to scan screen, and this is the more kind of starting out screen. Now, there's a lot of similar stuff here. So we have enter patient information. That's this button and it's all touch screen. We have select transducer type, which is actually this one right here. And if we hit this button, it will just take us to this screen defaulting to whatever the last transducer used was. In this case, a curvilinear transducer. Let's talk about how to put in patient information. So what you do is you're gonna hit that patient button and you can manually put in whatever the patient's name is there. And depending on if you have any kind of EMR integration, you might actually have an orders-based pathway or a encounter-based pathway. And then you can pull up the patient's information straight from there. Um, but just in case you don't, this is how you put it manually in. Username goes here, and honestly, that's kind of important because that's how you can identify which scans are yours and which scans aren't. Here we can see that after I put in that information, the patient's name is here and my initials are down here. Now, if you need to change the transducers, for example, this right here, there's a curvilinear transducers wedge right here. Let's say you don't wanna use the curvilinear, you wanna use a different transducer go ahead and hit this button right here, the transducers and exams, and it'll take you to this page right here, and you can decide if you want the linear, the phased array, or the curvilinear transducer, as well as which setting within each transducer you need. I wanna take a brief pause here and remind you about the Ultrasound Leadership Academy. The Ultrasound Leadership Academy is an online fellowship as a comprehensive one full year of online uh, didactics that I actually recorded and created for the most part. We have a few guests in there that help. We have one-on-one -on -one hangouts where we just talk and we give you that mentoring to really bring you up to the next level. And one of our new offerings that I'm super excited about is that we can offer image review, meaning in a HIPAA compliant way, we can actually check your images and give you tips and pointers on how to improve that because not all of us have the ability to have someone who can perform quality assurance of the scans that we do. Check it out. Go to ultrasoundleadershipacademy.com. Now back to the podcast. Now, before we move on, one more thing that I want to discuss is making sure that your recordings are set to the right settings. And just in case they're set to like two second clips which are not enough to really tell anything or they're retrospective clips, which can be quite annoying actually when you think they're prospective clips. Let me show you how to fix that. So you click the more controls button on that bottom right, right there. And then you're going to click on video clip settings. You can see it there on the bottom left of the screen. And then you can adjust retrospective, prospective, and you can have the time all the way up to 60 seconds if you'd like. I really only use those longer clips, the 60 second clips, when I'm doing specific procedures because I don't have the ability to like hit record every six seconds. Now to record images, you'll go ahead and hit that save video clip right here, or you'll hit the save image if you wanted to take some kind of a calculation there on the left side. Now, when you're done doing your exam and you're ready to end it, you hit end exam, you're gonna hit yes, and then it's gonna take you back to this page. Now let's talk about how to export your clips. Hopefully you have your ultrasound machine integrated into your EMR. You don't have to do this, but just in case you don't, this right here on the right side of the main kind of tray of the export, there are three USB plugs and you can basically plug in your HIPAA compliant thumb drive into that slot there. And you can see that here on this side, I have nothing plugged in. And then right here, I see the 
USB kind of symbol here. And this means that the machine recognizes it. Now, if you don't see this, if you plug in your USB drive and you don't see it here, what you'll need to do is make sure that you format your USB drive to either FAT32 or XFAT. Just Google it if you don't know how to do that and then plug it back in because that is usually the format that the export can recognize. Now, after you end an examination, you're gonna basically be taken back to this page and you can kind of start over. But if you're ready to export your clips, what you'll do is you'll just hit either scan or enter patient information and you'll get to this screen, which we're familiar with. You're gonna hit the review button and then patient list and it's gonna give you all of the ultrasounds that were done to get your clips exported. You're gonna select the ones that you want. I'm gonna select this one over here, the top one. I'm gonna click that and then hit export USB and then it is kind of ready to go over here. You can choose to include or not include the patient data and then hit done and wait for that to export. That's it for this five minute Sono video on how to do basic machine operation on the Sono site export, as well as how to add patient information and how to export via USB. I hope to hear from you soon and happy scanning.